Hi, welcome to the session on the introduction to the Cricut program. What we're going to be looking at today is actually the start of the programming analysis. So far in class we've talked about what is required and how we need to go about setting up the program. And I talked about, well, what is the most simplest part? What is the smallest part? We need to, when we um, write code, we actually do top-down design, start with a big picture, work down, but then we have the bottom-up code, which means we need to start with the core of the program. What we've worked out from our discussion is, well, we really need to be able to roll two dice to start with. One was the bowling, uh, batting dice, and one is the bowling dice. So what we're going to do is we're going to start an Action Script 3 program. This program is also sort of set in a way that we don't actually have to interface with the GUI. So the aim is to actually look at the code structures and nothing more. So once the Mac has decided to let us in, we will get underway. So the first thing we're going to do is um, select layer 1, frame 1. I'm just going to collapse this side one here down. We can come back to it when we need it. First of all, I'm going to put in the stop command. And then something else you need to sort of put in, and you may do this right at the top, is our developer comments. So in our developer comments, we probably want the programmer. In this case here. And um, after we got the, we probably need to put in the date that we're actually creating this on. So I'm just going to put xx slash xx slash xx. And then once we've done that, um, you probably want to also have some information about the program. And this is going to be a cricket simulator. Now, once we've done that, this is our developer comments in there. We need to make sure we go and put comments as we move through our code. Helps another program to come in and pick up from where you left off. Some people write their code and then come back later and fill in all the all the developer comments. It's up to you if you do it in, on the way or come back and do it later. So the very first thing we need to do, we actually need to declare some variables because we're going to roll a couple of dice. So because we're going to roll some dices, we need to declare those dices. To do that we need to use a var comment. Now in this case here, because these are outside of a function, they're actually global, there are global variables. Therefore any other function can see these variables that we're declaring at the moment. So first of all we actually need to have the batting dice. So um, it's going to be a number. And it's of type number. And the other dice we're going to need is a bowling. Now, when picking variable names, try to give them the biggest name you can or the most descriptive name you can. That way you don't get confused as you code. Okay, now we have the two, two variables set up ready for the numbers. So, what I need to do now is some processing. And in my processing, what I want to be able to do is actually roll two dice. So get in the habit of um, copying and pasting. So in this case here, I'm going to do the batting dice. And that's going to be equal to a maths function. And maths here will actually round up. Maths random will actually roll the dice for us. And we times six, which is the upper limit. So what you find here, it finds a random number between um, 0 and 1, times that by 6, so we could have anything from 0 when it rounds down up to 6, and then maths.seal, which always rounds up, so we'll never get a 0, we'll always end up with a 1. Before I go any further, I actually want to trace this out. And the reason for that is, no use going any further in our program unless this is working. So let's roll the program. In our output window at the top, we've got a 4. So if I run the program again, we've got a 1, 3, 3, 5, 6. No zeros are coming up and the numbers are all appearing. So that's what we're chasing here. So, so far, so good. So dice 1 works. So let's do the same for the um, bowling dice. Now, because we've already written the code, can copy and paste this and then change this to the bowling. You 
once again we're also going to trace this out just to make sure that we're getting the right two numbers because if we're getting the wrong numbers no use going any further in the program so now I've got a 5 and a 4 3 and a 4 4 and a 1 3 and a 3 and a 4 and a 5 so in this little video what we've been able to do is to clear some variables processing we've rolled the two dice and then we've outputted the information now for the next part of the program we need to actually work out what the difference is there is a scoring chart so basically if the difference between the batting die or the bowling dice and the batting dice or the batting dice and the bowling dice is five they get a six if it's four it's four three three runs two runs one runs if they get zero the difference is zero obviously we've rolled a six and a six that's zero the difference so therefore they're out so what we now need to do is find the difference so before I actually um, go any further, our trace statement has actually got n batting dice. What I want to do is give this some more information. So I'm going to use a concatenated line of code. In other words, I'm going to have two things occur in the one output. So, so I'm going to have batting dice. And then I want it to show what the dice is. So batting dice will come out as text, a space, the equal sign is space. Then it will give me the number. I'm going to do the same for the bowling dice. So now my output, rather than having just a list of numbers, the numbers are actually going to have more information. Batting dice equals 5, bowling dice equals 4. Run it again, the batting dice is 2, the bowling dice is 3. So it gives us a little bit more information in our output. When we finish our code, we can always just go through and put two forward slashes in front of our trace statements. So when the program runs now, we get no trace comments and we can feed that information back to the GUI if we like. But for the nature of this program, we can actually do everything through trace statements. So as I said before, we now need to work out the difference. So this is the next key thing. So to work out the difference, all I need to do is subtract the bowling dice from the batting dice but I then need that information to process so I need to store that information so if I'm going to store it I need to declare a, a variable and this is going to be n difference and once again it's going to be a number you could actually use an integer if you like because they're all going to be whole numbers we'll never get a decimal point in a number it's up to you how you'd like to do it there is some efficiency discussions on that but that's another time so n difference is going to be equal to n batting dice minus n bowling dice. Now the semicolon ends that line of code. So this batting dice minus the bowling dice and store that in any difference. Once we've done that, we actually want to trace that out. The difference is, and then what we can do then is close that off, put the plus sign in to join two statements together, and output the contents of the variable. So when the program runs now, I should actually have the the batting dice is 1, the bowling dice is 2, the difference is minus 1. Run it again, still minus 1. Run again, the difference is now 3. So the difference between 5 and 2 is 3. So, once we've done that, we've rolled two dice, we've worked out the difference, so from that there we can now look at sorting out what, um, if they've actually scored runs or not, where if the, dif if the difference is 5, they get 6 runs, if the difference is 4, they get four runs, three, two, one, and if they're the same, they're out. If they're a negative number, like negative one or etc., then any negative number will be known as a dot ball. And at this point in time, we're not tracking dot balls, so we're more interested in five, four, three, two, one, and zero. 
for the result of n difference.